This is a brand new top of the line Bean Canyon Intel Nook. It has the new i7 855-9U 4.5 GHz processor with an Iris Plus Graphic 655 iGPU. This Nook achieved a 12,870 Passmark score, which is impressively high for any CPU and is especially high for such a small, energy efficient system. So how well does it perform as a Plex server? I've seen a lot of recommendations out there from people with regards to using a Nook as a Plex server. After doing some research, I decided to go with something on the high end of the performance spectrum to find out just how good these little computers could perform as Plex servers. The Nook I chose is the Nook i7-BEH. It's an 8th generation Intel CPU. I picked this model for its powerful CPU and iGPU. It has the Iris Plus Graphic 655, which scores 2000 in Passmark. And if you saw our previous video on the UHD 630 in the i5-8600K, you know when we used that configuration with hardware transcoding enabled, we got great results. For comparison's sake, the i5-8600K scores 12806 in Passmark, which is slightly less than the i7-8559U found in this Nook and the UHD 630i GPU in the 8600K scores 1,152, which is half that of the Iris Plus 655 in this Nook, which comes in at 2,050 in Passmark. So on paper, this Nook should outperform the i5-8600K. In reality, however, it is a slightly different story. The first tests were ran to get a power consumption baseline. At idle, no external monitor or USB peripherals plugged in, this Nook sipped only 6.7 watts of electricity, and at full load, it only used 49 watts. This computer is extremely energy efficient. To put that in perspective, your typical non-LED light bulb is 100 watts, so at idle, this thing uses roughly 1 16th the power of a standard light bulb and at full load, it uses only half the electricity of a light bulb. If you were to migrate from a server that uses 175 to 300 watts of electricity at idle, which is most standard dual enterprise grade servers, you would be saving about $256 per year on electricity. So how does it perform? Well, considering the amount of power it uses and its size, it performs quite well. I got 14 H265 1080p AAC to H264 1080p AAC transcodes with hardware transcoding on, and only six transcodes with hardware transcoding off. I was able to achieve 14 H265 1080p AC3 to H264 1080p AAC transcodes with hardware transcoding on, and five transcodes with hardware transcoding off. Next, I tested a 12 megabit per second H.264 file encoded to 1080p, transcoded that down to 1080p at 10 megabits per second. With hardware transcoding on, I saw 12 transcodes, and with hardware transcoding off, I was able to get six. I would like to preface this next test by saying I don't think you should transcode 4K media down to lower resolutions as it is extremely difficult for any hardware to do. But that said, it's an easy benchmark to run for comparison's sake. Our first test was transcoding H.264 4K AC3 at 33 megabits per second down to H.264 1080p AAC at 10 megabits per second. I was able to get four transcodes with hardware transcoding on and four transcodes with hardware transcoding off. The final test I ran was transcoding 4K H.265 Main 10 HDR at 12 megabits per second with AC3 audio down to H.264 1080p at 10 megabits per second AAC audio. I was able to get one transcode running with hardware transcoding on and one transcode running with hardware transcoding off. So comparing these results to our small, medium, and large builds, you can see the Intel Nook performs quite well, beating out our small and medium builds in H.265 transcoding and tying our large build. Its performance in H.264 transcoding was pretty good, but it couldn't beat out our small, medium, or large builds. Overall, this little computer is quite a powerhouse, and the cost to operate it is very minimal. There are, however, some caveats to running such a machine as your Plex server. 
For starters, there isn't much of an upgrade path if you pick up one of these nooks and use it as a Plex server. You can't add a GPU like a P2000 or a GTX 9, 10, or 20 series very easily. While it's true you can get adapters to go from M.2 to PCI X4, it would be quite a jerry rig setup, and if you did get it working, you'd need an external power supply to power the card, which would likely be bigger than the nook itself. You can't exactly change out or upgrade the CPU either, as it's permanently mounted to the board. This means that if you bought one of these lower tier nooks and wanted to upgrade, you'll have to buy an entirely new unit. This may or may not be a deal breaker, but as long as you size it appropriately from the start, you should be okay down the road. Another caveat is the fact that connecting one of these nooks to a storage solution outside of USB or Thunderbolt will require some sort of adapter. You can buy USB 3.1 to 10 gigabit Ethernet or Thunderbolt to 10 gigabit Ethernet adapters, but they aren't very cheap and might set you back at least half the price of the Nook itself. Overall, I think these Nooks have their place among Plex server options, but I can't see myself using one. While the 6 watt idle and 50 watt max power consumption is something very appealing to me, the fact that my i5-8600K idles at sub 30 watts means I really wouldn't see much of a cost savings from running this little box as my Plex server. I do think these machines make great computers, and there is probably a long list of things this would be great at, but for me, its performance is not a good replacement for my current server. It also doesn't seem the 2K pass mark for this iGPU translated to real-world performance gains. That was an interesting observation. It seems newer generation chips have better performance advantages than a synthetic benchmark score when hardware transcoding in Plex. Some of you might benefit by running this as your Plex server or picking it up as your first Plex server. It is really easy to set up, makes almost no noise, emits virtually no heat, and best of all, it occupies very little space. You likely won't notice it in your electricity bill each month either, and it is relatively inexpensive and could be converted to a desktop should you upgrade down the road. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd like to get a discussion going about using Nooks, why you chose a Nook, and what your specific use case was. I'm very curious as I can't think of all the potential use cases, and this did prove to be a fairly powerful solution as a Plex server. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. We're a small channel trying to grow and any support from you helps tremendously. Oh, and one last thing. We're giving away an 8TB Western Digital hard drive. Please visit our website, slothtechtv.com, to enter to win. Your odds look pretty good, as at the time of recording this video, there are only 8 total entries. So go to our website and make sure you get entered to win.